I've finished knitting the cuffs of the sleeves. They match. I'm happy with the consistency. With both, I have left the large loops and a large end piece of yarn so that I can crochet the side seams together. And I will be crocheting the side seams together because it is far, far neater. I'm now moving on to the neckline and we are looking at the outside of the garment. The neckline is not a straight row. Of course, it's around. And the pattern instructs you to double crochet, a double crochet in each of the chains around the neck. And that's easy, you know, and you can do that quite easily. But because I want consistency, I'm going to do exactly the same as I've done on the sleeve cuffs. I'm going to pick up the stitches, I'm going to knit three rows, and I'm going to do a cast off. To do this, I need double ended needles because you can't use those straight needles on a neckline. Most packs of double, end, double ended needles come in fours. I'm going to use five and I'll show you why I'm going to use five in a second. My issue is that I do not have five millimeter double ended needles as I've used throughout the garment. I've used five millimeter needles throughout the garment. I've only got four millimeter. So I've got five of these. So it's locked down. It'd be difficult for me to get hold of them. It will take a long time for delivery. I'm going to give it a go and I might just have to knit a bit looser. So just like with picking up around the cuff edges, I'm going to do exactly the same, but I'm starting at the back. There's the back marker. So I know I've got, I'm looking at the back of the garment so that if I have any join to make, it will be at the back and not so visible. So if we start again, I've got the, where's my end yarn? There it is. So I'm going to do the same thing again. So if I assess that halfway through the back here, I'll take that. Again, set my tension. Bring the yarn through that first stitch. So every chain, again, I'm going to weave the end in over, under. Just make sure that you pick up the, the top of the chain, the two loops of the chain and weave that end yarn, whoops, that slipped, and weave that end yarn in. So I'm just going to take this needle to the end. And all the time, yep, I'm weaving it in. So you can see through the two loops of the chain, take that down. So that's the next move, bring the yarn through, this time over, bring the yarn through, this time the yarn goes under, there you go. Again, take a look, there it is, I'm weaving the, weaving the end in. Don't miss any chains, particularly as, you know, I shouldn't because I am using a smaller size needle. Oops, that's snagged. I'll split that stitch. There you go. Okay. So I'm coming up to the corner or the edge, the size, the neck, the neck edge here, the side of it. I'm going to drop that now. I'm not going to do that anymore. So coming up here, one more in the corner there, getting tight. Again, I want to get my needle in there. Okay. 
be persistent make sure you get your yarn through there you go got that so now going over to the other side I'm going to start picking up stitches along the front so leave those stitches on there take another needle another one of your double-ended needles you don't want gaping holes so try to pick up through any gaps and keep your yarn there you go I'm, I'm keeping that quite tight there there you go and again come along this one so this is the pickup and I, you can see that because it's slightly different than the cast off the chain is not the same it does not look the same but you still need to pick up the two loops of the cast on and we'll come along here halfway there you go check that it's all sit you can see there there's a I haven't picked the yarn up properly so I don't like that I'm going to take it back and go start that one again check on your stitches check on your work to make sure that it is neat and it is consistent You can see I'm going into every chain to pick these up. That's better. Get that right. A few more. Okay, so how many do we have on this hook, on this needle? We have two, four, six, eight, ten, twelve, fourteen, sixteen, eighteen, twenty-two. That's good. And get the next needle. Again, turn your work around a bit. So you can see the two. Now we take this. So again, there you go, there's the third needle going in, here we go. So we'll take this again to this side. Make sure you don't snag, don't try and pull things through if they're not coming through smoothly because it will show it in your work. That's trying to snag. That's better. Okay, how's that looking? Yep, that's good. It's awkward. Try your best way to work with this. I 
Okay, so that's the last stitch along there. But what we have here, we have a slight gapping because of the cast on. So I'm going to actually take it over there. Let's have a look. What does that look like? So I'm trying to cover that gap. That's a bit better. And hopefully as we knit around, we do it the first round and the second and third rows, that will mask that. So that's that one. Then the fourth needle to do the last few chains, pick up the last few stitches along the back there. So again, pick up on the chain. Have I got it? Probably not perfect, but nope, don't like that. It's snagging, it's too thick. That's better. One. Go back to that. One. So it is a bit of trial and error. Just find your way and do what works. Two, there you go. So I'm having to help get the stitch over. That's fine. They're all going, they're all coming through. We'll do a count after this and see how many I've managed to pick up. There, there we go, two more. Okay, so there we have it. There's the four. Be careful that you don't snag things, otherwise you will stretch it. So I'm going to start where we began. So two, 10, two, 22, 30, 40, four, 50, 60, 67, last needle, 68, 90, so just two stitches more. And that's not so bad because like I say, I've got a smaller needles anyway. So that's what it looks like. Here's our fifth needle and we'll start to knit on the next video.